landscape of transportation is undergoing a profound transformation, shifting from traditional petrol vehicles to electric ones. This evolution promises cleaner and more sustainable mobility solutions. However, it's not without its challenges. In this episode of Future of Mobility, we delve into the complexities of this transition and explore the innovative solutions that pave the way toward a greener future. If you take commercial vehicles and you take three wheelers, it was about you know, 3%. This year we are seeing that that's more than double to 6-7%. So really all indicators in terms of EV penetration and if you see uh, you know, a lot of the other things happening around us, that the infrastructure is going up, the kind of uh, charging uh, structures that are being put up across uh, you know, networks of uh, PSUs and definitely in a measured manner because there are challenges, but clearly the market is now evolving. I think giving a better offering to the consumers is one way the automobile industry is putting these uh, propositions up. If you look at battery, battery cost coming down, that is being passed on. Nearly one, one and a half lakhs is the cost being passed on to the various uh, consumers. So all this, I think the automobile industry is gearing up. The automobile industry is gearing up for the challenge with many companies planning models that cater to the growing demand for electric vehicles. It's this combination of EV penetration and accompanying services that will aim to truly drive the transformation towards sustainable transportation. In terms of challenges that are faced by the electric vehicle market today, there are, I would say, three major challenges in the market. The first being a limitation in the charging infrastructure. There is good enough infrastructure available when it comes to numbers. India has a ratio of, I would say, 20 is to 1, uh, 20, char 20 cars per charger. That is a good ratio when compared to the global uh, countries. But that infrastructure is not reliable. When you reach there, the charger is not working. It does not charge at your, uh, in, in by your convenience. The payment does not go through. Power is not there. There are multiple reasons which affect the downtime of the charger. The second challenge, I would say, is the availability of options in EVs. And the third, I would say, is the cost of the vehicles. Uh, before January this year, when before the rates were revised by the automotive OEMs, the cost of the same vehicle model in electric versus ICE was drastically different that caused the consumers not to shift towards EV. In the quest to revolutionize the DC chargers manufacturing industry, Direx envisions global leadership. Their mission emphasizes practical usage, urging consumers to embrace sustainability by fully utilizing their products. So we want to focus on three things, technology, reliability and service. When it comes to technology, we are working on many things which our charger has which are different to others like you know high-end microprocessors compared to industry standard of two or three uh, controllers or processors in our product, we have 12. So having that 12 number of processors in our product allow us to get more data of each and every aspect of our charger which in turn turns to a higher reliable product. Because we are able to get higher insights of what is going on inside our product, we can service it better and we can make it better through our constant innovation. So whenever we are there making a product strategy, we look at all the historical data we have from the past six years in each and every charger and see where the failure has happened, how the failure has happened, in what condition the failure was ensured. So that makes our product more and more better because from a certification and a standard standpoint, it is made from a global point of view for every single user. But when it comes to India, India has very harsh climate conditions as well as uh, usage conditions. India has extreme cold temperature as well as extreme heat temperature, extremely dusty environment in certain areas. So that uh, allows us being an Indian company to make our product in a way that is intended for the Indian market uh, with the global features that we have. Chargers right now in the market, you know, uh, uh, the vast majority players, they're claiming around, you know, 94%. Uh, struggling even for 95%, where we have exceeded, you know, 96, 97% even. And <clears throat> even to make them more power efficient, because what happens uh, if it's not efficient, someone is still paying for that electricity, which is wasted somewhere. So what we're looking at is now uh, moving to more uh, power denser devices and using uh, state of the art semiconductors called silicon carbide MOSFETs, which if, you know, they get through properly, it's going to be 98% efficient. So we're going to be, you know, pushing for highly efficient solutions uh, for the end user, saving electricity and whoever is paying for it, be it the discoms or the intermediate clients. 
So that's one of the major things on uh, efficiency which I can talk about. Reliability. When you talk about reliability, our products, you know, we say they are highly reliable. Why? So it's not just end of the line testing, but you know, when the critical components come in, you have uh, incoming inspection, you have incoming testing of these uh, critical components, as well as you have in process inspection. You know, when the charger is partly assembled, and you know, things are falling in place or not. And then the end of the line inspection along with testing. So the test equipment that we have is, you know, from a German manufacturer where we run multiple soft cases and hard cases on this equipment uh, and to cater to the full power. So we can go from 30 kilowatt right up to 300 kilowatts of power full testing. Whereas others, they would be just testing the charger when it's actually deployed on the field, right? So we have uh the full testing setup we need in-house at our plant so that when the charger goes out of our facility you know it's 100 percent tested and it is already done all the checks have been done user friendliness i'll just touch upon that uh, you know we continue to take you know end user customer feedback uh apply it to our uh, user interfaces for seamless use of them and if there is any customization that they need or any specific things that they need we can cater to that also we work with uh, the automotive OEMs, the automotive manufacturers and then the installation companies or the CPOs and try to understand what are their requirements, what are the problems they are facing, the environmental conditions under which these are deployed and based on that feedback we work on our product designs to make sure we are keeping uh, track with uh, technology enhancements done by them as well as interoperability and compatibility with multiple vehicles. So we collaborate with them to test with the different brands of vehicles also to make sure anybody with any brand of vehicle comes to the charger, they are able to charge. With a steadfast dedication and a clear vision, the Hinduja Group company, Gulf Oil Lubricants, has secured a controlling stake in Tyrex transmission further solidifying its position in the electric vehicle EV segment. Tyrex's strong performance in the DC charger market, coupled with Gulf Oil's extensive presence, enhances distribution reach and strengthens relationships with OEMs and infrastructure B2B customers. Tyrex, uh, which is now part of uh, Gulf Oil Lubricants and part of the Hinduja Group, is definitely one of the uh, good players in terms of the technology, service, reliability for DC fast chargers. And really for Tyrex and us together, we want to definitely get the technology uh, to a higher level. We want to look at uh, better products. We want to look at very reliable and after sales service, which is the best. Really, this is where Tyrex is gearing up. Technology roadmap, service, definitely looking at some innovations like having a modular system of charging and working closely with the customers so that we can offer the best chargers, we can offer the best service, help in getting the infrastructure started for the charging uh, you know, environment. From day one, our products have been used for more than 10, 15 hours a day. So whatever higher capacity of chargers we have made, they are very robust and reliable to ensure that they can be used for longer period of time be it from an efficiency point of view, be it from a thermal point of view, they are designed that even after 20 hour usage of day, they are working in the same manner when, when the day started. So we are bringing that technology to the public sector as well, where currently, though the usage is very less, but when the EV adoption grows in a year or two years time, it will reach the same level of usage that is there in the captive market. So we are creating that technology that we did for a larger market into a smaller product for the public market to ensure that uh, the same product, which is highly reliable, self-sustainable and requires less maintenance, can be used for public charging. In conclusion, industry leaders like Gulf Oil Lubricants and Tyrex Chargers are spearheading innovative solutions to address challenges in electric mobility. Through technology, reliability and service, they are shaping a sustainable future driving the transformation towards cleaner transportation worldwide.